This week we're going to take a look at uh, Third Nephi chapters 27 through the end of Third Nephi and the fourth book of Nephi. So let's review a little historical context, and I think the best way on this one is to jump in and read a few verses. So if you go to Third Nephi 27, let's take a look at verse 2. Jesus showed himself, uh, again showed himself unto them. Now, I'll, I'll remember from last week, Jesus spent three days with the Nephites, or the Lamanites, I mean that group there that were gathered around the temple, showing up many times to them. And then after that, it said that he appeared to them many times. Well, here's one of the many times that Jesus did uh, visit these people. So here he is showing again somewhere in America, visiting all of those great people. And uh, for they were praying in the Father unto the Father in his name, and Jesus came and stood in the midst of them, and said unto them, What will ye that I should give unto you? Well, here is something interesting. They're discussing the name of the church. What should the name of the church be? This is the same uh, discussion that uh, President Nelson gave uh, in October of 2018. Let me just show you a couple of quick things from his talk. Uh, this is October 2018, and the talk was entitled, The Correct Name of the Church. He said, when we omit his name from his church, we are inadvertently removing him as the central focus of our lives. So here the Savior, and again, President Nelson goes in and quotes much of 3 Nephi 27, talking about that. Something else that I thought was really interesting, President Nelson said, have we been so afraid to offend someone who called us Mormons that we have failed to defend the Savior himself, to stand up for him, even in the name by which his church is called. Some pretty strong words by our prophet there. Uh, and he talks about some didn't like the change when we emphasized. It really wasn't a change. It was just a re-emphasis, a, a correction, um, mind you. So there's some really great things about that talk when you're, you can review when you read 3 Nephi 27, because that's really what this chapter is about. Now, let's go to verse 14 through 18, as you can see there on the screen. Here is a section about the atonement, some really interesting doctrine that really makes it clear that Jesus suffered for us. And one of the reasons is verse 15, For this cause have I been lifted up, therefore, according to the power of the Father, I will draw all men unto me, that they may be judged according to their works. You and I couldn't even stand in the presence of the Father to be judged if it weren't for the atonement. The fact that we may say evil people will even be able to be in the presence of the Father to receive their final judgment is because of the atonement. Without that, that wouldn't be possible. I thought that was a really good verse to help illustrate that beautiful doctrine. Uh, let's go to verses 19 through 22. There's that statement, no unclean thing can enter into his kingdom. Again, if it weren't for the atonement, that would be impossible. And verse 20, Repent all ye ends of the earth, and come unto me and be baptized in my name. Just a beautiful doctrine there about the gospel. And I like 21 too. No, this is my gospel, and ye know the things that ye must do in my church. And I'm curious, do we really know what to do in his church? I mean, if we took away all of the programmatic things, would the gospel of Jesus Christ be the center there? Would we really know what to do? Uh, verse 23 uh, through 29, it's all about record keeping again. And I know this gets brought up often because the Lord emphasizes it so many times. Verse 23, write the things which ye have seen and heard. And I'm curious how many of us, and maybe I'm not as good as I should be, do I keep a record? Do I keep a journal of the things which I have seen and, and I've heard? Uh, felt. Uh, they need to be recorded, a testimony of these things. Why? Why are these things? Uh, verse 25, because, it doesn't say because, but verse 25, Behold, out of the books which have been written, and which shall be written, shall this people be judged. Again, our, our judgment's going to be based upon the things that are written. So he's commanded, keep a record. Keep a record. For behold, all things are written by the Father. 
Therefore, out of the books which shall be written shall the world be judged. He makes it very clear. Our, we're not going to be judged against something we didn't know about. So he has it recorded, and we're, spo- and we're commanded to study those writings that we might be prepared and will be judged out of those things. Some great things. Now, verse 27, I want to put something in proper context. We always say, what manner of men ought you to be? Verily I say unto you, even as I am. In verse 27, the context behind that is judging people. Verse 27, and know ye that ye shall be judges of this people according to the judgment which I shall give unto you. In other words, what manner of men ought you be? Really what he's saying is, what kind of a judge should you be? Well, you should be the kind of judge that the Savior is. I mean, just some amazing things there. So let's go to verse 28. Again, how many times has verse 28 and 29 been written in the Scriptures and emphasized over and over and over? Ask, knock, seek. You'll receive, you'll find, it will be opened. Some great things there. Now, at the end of chapter 27, there's not some great news. He tells them how great they are, but then he gives a warning that the fourth generation, this is verse 32, Behold, it sorroweth me because of the fourth generation from this generation, from this generation, for they are led away captive unto him, even even as was the son of perdition. So why would he relate the fourth generation with the son of perdition? Well, Remember, the son of perdition had a fullness of the light and understanding. That's these people. The fourth generation, they will know all things, and then they will reject it. That's what makes them in this category. Well, let's go to the next chapter here for a second. Chapter 28 is a great little chapter about what we know now as the three Nephites. There were all 12 of the Nephite apostles were given a uh, a request, may we say, and three of them chose to remain on the earth. This is a time where it's appropriate to study the terms transfigure, translate, and resurrect. Uh, I asked my kids this morning that question. What's the difference between these three? And they did a pretty good job explaining it. Which ones are temporary? Which ones are permanent? Which one's short-term? Which one's long-term? You can look all three of those terms up in the gospel library, and they have their own little topic there. So I think that's probably uh, one of the more important things to study in 3 Nephi 28. 3 Nephi 29, just short, all about the Book of Mormon. And the Book of Mormon's coming. I just want to point out three woes in here. In verse 2 it says, Ye may know. Uh, And then it says at the end of that verse, Ye need not say that the Lord delays his coming. You don't need to say that. And then he gives the three woes. Verse 5, there's a woe. Verse 6, there's a woe. And verse 7, there's a woe. Again, woe meaning grief and sorrow if you do this or don't do that. So check out the three woes in 3 Nephi 29. That will give you uh, something good to study on that day that you study that. Well, then there's chapter 30. uh, Is just a a council that Gentiles, that's anybody who's not of the house of Israel, needs to repent. Again, President Nelson, one of his first conference addresses was all about repentance. We need to repent. Then it talks about uh, what do we need to repent from, and he gives a long list in verse 2. Again, it's only two verses. It's a really short chapter, but there's some good things in there. It says, to, what do we need to repent of? Well, let's go to 4th Nephi now, and we'll spend a little bit of time with this one because there is some importance here. Uh, And this is where I want to give you the context uh, of people and timing and so forth, because we're going to cover in one chapter a very long time period. So, again, we'll just glance through some of the verses that start us out here. Verse 2. Thirty and six year, the thirty and sixth year, the people were all converted unto the Lord, both the Nephites and the Lamanites. No contention. They did deal justly one with another. So this is thirty and six years since the birth of the Savior. So this is only a couple of years after his death, resurrection, and ascension into heaven, including his visitation here to these people. 
So it is a good year to be alive in America. Everyone is dealing justly with one another. Uh, verse 3 at the end, they, all, they were all made free and partakers of the heavenly gift. Verse 4, there's peace in the land. Verse 5, there's great and marvelous works. Wonderful things. Verse 6 jumps all the way to the 50 and 9th year. So you go from year 36 to year 59. So you're jumping just in one verse. But if you go all the way down to verse 14, well, before between 7 and 14, uh, the people build up the cities. They replenish. It says they did multiply exceedingly fast. I love that. But in verse, let's go to verse 12. They did not walk anymore after the performances of the law of Moses. He wants to make it clear. The law of Moses has been fulfilled. They're now living the law of Christ, and they're having a beautiful time. Verse 13, mighty miracles wrought upon the disciples of Jesus. But verse 14, right in the middle, a hundred years have passed away. So we've jumped from year 36 to year 100. If there's a 70-year time window to be alive, that would be it right there. A great time to be alive. And then it also talks about those not the three Nephites, but the other Nephites uh, were finally taken back to the paradise of God. But the three were still there. And that whole first generation, they're now gone. And verse 16, I really like this. There could not be a happier people among all the earth. Maybe as a family, you can talk about what brings happiness. Well, verse 16 gives the answer. There's no envies. No one's jealous. Oh, why did so-and-so get that? Or why does she get that? Why did he get that? None of that, nor strifes, nor tumults, whoredoms, lines, murders, nor any manner of lasciviousness. So they're happy people. Thir uh, 17, no robbers, no murders. I mean, again, love it. Verse 18, 110 years have passed away. So uh, after 110 years, something now is going to happen. In verse 19, and it came to pass that Nephi had kept this last record, and he kept it upon the plates of Nephi. Died. So Nephi, who's the record keeper, dies. And his son Amos kept it in his stead. And he kept it on the plates of Nephi also. So if you look on the right side of the screen there, uh, that Amos takes over the record from Nephi. And verse 20 says, for 80 and 4 years, uh, he had kept that record. Uh, verse 21, Amos died, and it was 190 and 4 years. So again, verse 21, 194 years have now gone. And Amos dies, and he gives it to his son, Amos. That's why I put Amos the second on there. And then verse 22, 200 years had passed away, and all of the second generation had passed away, except for a few. In verse 23, now the land, they are rich. You can't keep the commandments and not receive blessings. But in verse 24, we see some major changes. Pride, costly apparel being worn. They're more concerned about the fineness of their wealth and their apparel and so forth. They're trying to get gain rather than just live a righteous life. And you can read a whole bunch of things of what happened in there about the, the three Nephites and so forth. But we're going to jump down to verse 35. Well, verse 27, it talks about there's many churches now. It's not just the church of Jesus Christ that we read about, but now there's many churches in there. Verse 35, 230 and first year, there was a great division among the people. This is where those who belong to the church were now called Nephites, and those who weren't were called Lamanites, Jacobites, Josephites, and Zoramites, and so forth. So, again, we're now only 210 years since the birth of the Savior. So, we're less than 200 years since Jesus had appeared to these people. And the first two generations are gone, and now there's a pride crept in there. We're in that third generation where some are righteous and some are not. Uh, verse 38 is really interesting, though. In the middle of 38, they did not dwindle in unbelief, but they did willfully rebel against the gospel of Christ. 
Again, this is that why they're a son of perdition. It's not just sinning against ignorance. They know exactly what they're sinning against. They are rejecting the Savior, Jesus Christ, and his wonderful gift of the atonement. Verse 39, and they were taught to hate the children of God. Hatred can be passed down. If you hate something and you teach your children that hate, they will get that and even amplify it. That's something very... Uh, we should be cautious about what what do we hate and are we passing that to our children? Well, let's go to boy, verse 46 mentions that the Gadianton robbers are now up and they're all over the face of the earth. They did traffic in all manner of traffic and it came to pass after 305 years had passed away. And the people did still remain in wickedness. Amos died. And his brother, Amaron, did keep the record instead. So we go from Nephi to Amos to Amos to his brother, Amaron. Verse 48, 320 years had passed away. And Amaron hid up the records which were sacred. That have been handed down for a very long time. And now we're to 320 years. A.D., uh, a very, very long time. We have covered almost 300 years of history just in this one chapter. Verse 49, we'll conclude with this. And he hid them up unto the Lord that they might come again unto the remnant of the house of Jacob, according to the prophecies and the promises of the Lord. And thus is the end of the record of Amaron. So next week we're going to look at Mormon uh, chapters 1 through 6, and we will review everything that's in those. Make sure we have some good historical context to help you with your reading. I hope you enjoy this and uh, have some things to study and learn this week. Have a great week.